Hey, everybody. So my name is Don Browning. I'm the Vice President of Architecture at Turner Broadcasting. And um, so uh, Turner is an international meeting company. And you may know us from some of our networks, like CNN, TBS, TNT, True TV, uh, and a whole host of others. Um, but the one thing that I love about my job is that we're constantly reinventing ourselves. And as such, we have these TV shows and films that are under constant reinvention. So one of those is, of course, Rick and Morty. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Last OG. Anthony Bourdain. March Madness in the Spring. And of course, my hero, Samantha Bee. And so for us, uh, when we think about television, it used to be about viewers. And, and so viewers would come home and, you know, they would like turn on their TV and go about their day and it would just kind of be in the background or whatever. Um, and, and for years, that's, that's what we had. Uh, but now we're really interested in fans. And so I watched the company rally around this notion of fans because fans are engaged and they're interacting with you and, and they're really involved in, in your life. And for us as IT leaders, I'm always thinking to myself, how can I take that and channel it into the business? And so for me, I'm always trying to figure out how can we reinvent ourselves as IT in order to help the business solve problems in new and different ways. Because for us in the media industry, we realize that the media landscape is changing. We totally get it. We know that everybody wants to watch on their phone. Uh, you want to go home, turn on your Apple TV, uh, watch what you want to watch when you want to watch it. We understand that. And so we are changing in order to meet our customers where they are. And that's really what drove our migration to the cloud. So it's funny. I get this question all the time, which is, are you done? Is the migration done? And, um, and I think it's kind of interesting because the whole goal of our, our cloud, tra cloud transformation was not to just take a bunch of stuff from here and drop it over there. Like, we weren't just trying to grab these 10,000 machines that we had running on-prem and sling them up in the cloud and be like, woo, we're done. Uh, the idea was to really kind of reinvent the way that we solve problems for the business. And a, an avenue to make that happen was to migrate to the cloud. But we weren't done once we got there. And so the cloud is re really allowing you to reinvent the way that you solve business problems. And what's interesting is the cloud itself is actually reinventing infrastructure. And I think this is what's kind of the most amazing thing, is that infrastructure today, once you're in AWS, is not actually infrastructure. And, and I really want to talk a little bit about that. OK. So there's this really interesting article from the National Institute of Health uh, where they kind of looked at software engineering throughout the ages and they compartmentalized it. And so if you look at the 50s and 60s, it was all about mastering the machine. So we, were, you know, we had this box in front of us, you know, it had like transistors and vacuum tubes. It's like, well, how do, we, how do we write code to make this thing do what we want it to do? And then they moved through into kind of the 60s and 70s and it was all about like mastering the process of building software. And then once the people had learned to build software and we were building lots of it, all of a sudden it was super complex. And then it was like, well, how do we manage all the complexity and object orientation came about and everything? And then we moved into this era of mastering communications. And it was all about like, remote procedure calls and SOAP and Complus and Corba and making clients dispatch to servers. And then we kind of moved into this other stage of mastering productivity. So now you've got you know, large groups of people who are building software, distributed software. How do you actually you know, Scrum and XP and, and different kind of processes for managing uh, the pipeline of work of large teams? So I propose now that we have moved into a completely different era. And we moved into this era of mastering infrastructure. And infrastructure now, being in the cloud, it looks completely different than it did just a couple of years ago. Um, and so a couple of years ago, the idea was you had a closet full of servers, and you had a group of people writing code, and, and, and you know, the people would write code, and they'd give it to the people who were in the servers, and it would run over there, and then a month later they would do the thing, and it would go again. And, and, um, and now we're kind of moving into this era of, of, of infrastructure being available just, just an API way. So I think what I'm saying is that I feel like everyone needs to push up the abstraction stack a little bit. And so originally, we were focused on things like EC2 and RDS and EBS and EMR and all these kind of like low-level primitives where you're still thinking about machines and memory and everything like that. And I think what we need to do is embrace these higher order services, because this is where the productivity happens. And so once you start using things like serverless Aurora and Kinesis and Fargate, 
uh, and SageMaker. You start to now think about solving a problem using a tool that's available to you, and you now don't have to kind of think about the low-level primitives. And so I think this is why you go to the cloud. Like these building blocks here is the whole point of going. So I want to um, give you an example, a couple of examples actually, of, of how we've kind of transformed our thinking at Turner. And, and the first is um, this idea of an IaaS Kubernetes platform to, um, to moving to Fargate. So when we were initially doing our migration, uh, you know, like I said before, we had like 10,000 servers, and we kind of realized that like, if we have all these machines, and they're going to all go to the cloud, well, we don't want 10,000 EC2s at the end of the day, so we need to embrace containers. And in 2015, 2016, Kubernetes was um, new and a little difficult to manage, and so we felt it was a good idea to have a group of people build a platform that would allow um, developers, like you know, mere mortals, to kind of like build an application, make a container, and then give it to us, and we would deploy it onto Kubernetes for them. And that worked really well for a, long, for, for, for a few years, several years. But then at reInvent uh, in 2017, we saw Fargate and EKS get announced. And we were like, wow, now we can move the platform to Amazon. And so the idea now is we don't have to do that anymore. We can take our IaaS Kubernetes thing that we had built, which is great, and move it over here to Amazon, let them run it, and then we can focus on tooling. And tooling is really interesting. Because now, what we've been able to do is write a whole bunch of open source tools that we can give not only to our internal developers, but to everyone. And that will allow them to leverage Fargate in a consistent, secure manner, uh, and, and really kind of move away from having to run a lot of this platform infrastructure ourselves. And later today, my colleague John Ritzma is going to present our tooling story in Fargate uh, at 5 o'clock. I encourage you to go check it out. So another idea that we had was we have petabytes of content in S3. So the idea was we have all this content sitting on all these on-prem um, like drive arrays, disk arrays. Let's get it all into um, to S3 for, for storing. So while it's sitting there, we started thinking, can we do something with it? Like maybe we should run it across some of these canned APIs and see if we can extract data from it. And so in this case, um, we were using just the canned machine learning APIs like recognition to do things like celebrity detection, uh, face object scene detection, look for pathing and do object segmentation, uh, rip the, uh, the, the text out of the video, and we can do NLP and transcription against it. And these are all things that are just there for you to use because you're already in the cloud. And so, and so these are complete value adds by just having the content stored in S3. Another idea was, well, what if we wanted to kind of do our own thing? And what if we wanted to detect something that Amazon, does, their canned APIs aren't detecting? And so in this case, we were able to extract a custom piece of data from video, which is the, 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 um, the slate, which you often see them, you know, at the beginning of a scene, the thing collapse. So the idea here is, well, could we not only detect the slate, but can we actually read the data from the slate? And what SageMaker allowed us to do was focus on building the model. And after that, the deployment and everything else just kind of came for free. So as you take away, or you take in all the information from the summit today, just please be aware of how it will allow you to reinvent the way you think about infrastructure. It will allow you to reinvent the way that you solve problems. And most importantly, it will allow you to reinvent the way you build solutions. Thank you.